Chapter Four of Stories of Animal Sagacity. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. Stories of Animal Sagacity by W. H. G. Kingston. Chapter Four Donkeys. Degraded as it is supposed they are by nature, and cruelly ill-used as donkeys too often are in England, they are fully as intelligent as horses. They are not only capable of playing all manner of tricks, but sometimes indulge in a variety of their own accord. Donkey Bob, the Policeman Mrs. F.'s father-in-law had a donkey named Bob, which was kept in a field with other animals, and grazed quietly with them, but jealously guarded the entrance against all intruders. If any strange cows, sheep, or pigs ventured within his territory, Bob instantly ran at them full tilt and hunted them from the premises, kicking out his heels and biting whenever he had the opportunity. Indeed, if he but saw them inclined to come in, he would stand in the gap and defend it bravely. His vigilance was so great that it was considered unnecessary to have a herdsman in the place. Bob was clearly convinced that it was his duty to keep that field against all intruders. Dear young reader, when you have the property of another person to watch over, guard it as effectually as did honest Bob his master's paddock. End of Donkey Bob the Policeman The Ass and the Door Latch Donkeys sometimes exert their ingenuity to their own advantage, like some other creatures. A certain ass had his quarters in a shed, in front of which was a small yard. On one side of the yard was a kitchen garden, separated from it by a wall, in which was a door fastened by two bolts, and a latch. The owner of the premises one morning, in taking a turn round his garden, observed the footprints of an ass on the walks and beds. Surely someone must have left the door open at night, thought the master. He accordingly took care to see that it was closed. Again, however, he found that the ass had visited the garden. The next night, Curious to know how this had happened, he watched from a window overlooking the yard. At first, he kept a light burning near him. The ass, however, remained quietly at his stall. After a time, to enable him to see better, he had it removed, when what was his surprise to see the supposed stupid donkey come out of the shed, go to the door, and, rearing himself on his hind legs, unfastened the upper bolt of the door with his nose. This done, he next withdrew the lower bolt, then lifted the latch, and walked into the garden. He was not long engaged in his foraging expedition, and soon returned with a bunch of carrots in his mouth. Placing them in his shed, he went back and carefully closed the door and began at his ease to munch the provender he had so adroitly got possession of. The owner, suspecting people would not believe his story, invited several of his neighbors to witness the performance of the ass. Not till the light, however, had been taken away would the creature commence his operations, evidently conscious that what he was doing was wrong. A lock was afterwards put on the door, which completely baffled the ingenuity of the cunning animal. End of the Ass and the Door Latch The Ass and the Teetoller The ass has a memory not inferior to that of a horse. This was especially noticeable in the case of an ass belonging to a carrier at Wigan. The ass and his master were accustomed to stop at a certain public house where the latter obtained a pot of beer, of which he always allowed the animal a little. At length, the master turned teetotaler when his principals forbade him to stop at the public house. But the ass, whenever he reached the usual halting place, refused to go on, 
and no beating would induce him to do so till he had received his usual allowance of beer. The carrier was therefore obliged to buy some beer for his beast, though no longer requiring it himself. Remember what I said about bad habits. Though your friends, from weariness, may cease to rebuke you, it is no proof that you are cured of them, or that the habits are not as objectionable as the first. End of the Ass and the Teetoller The Donkey and His Mistress Donkeys are capable of great affection for those who treat them well. An old woman, known to Mrs. F., had a donkey which usually grazed on the roadside near her cottage, and when he saw any person about to enter her abode, would instantly run to the door and defend it against all intrusion till the dame herself appeared. If any one annoyed the old woman, as the boys around would sometimes do, for the sake of seeing how the donkey would behave, he would kick at them fiercely put them to the rout, and pursue them for some distance. When the dame wished to ride, he would proceed with the greatest care and gentleness. But if any other person attempted to mount him, the ass very soon convinced them that their will and power were useless in a contest, and the effort usually ended in the rider being roughly thrown and perhaps kicked. End of the Donkey and His Mistress the brave ass and his foe. I have heard of a donkey, which on one occasion bravely did battle for himself. He happened to be feeding near a river when a fierce bulldog attacked him, but so gallantly did he strike out with his heels that his assailant was unable to fix on him. At length, the ass suddenly turned round and seized the neck of the bulldog in his teeth. The dog howled with pain and struggled to get free, but the ass had no intention as yet of letting it go. Holding it tight, he dragged it struggling into the water, going deeper and deeper. Then, kneeling down where the depth was sufficient for the purpose, he kept the dog under the surface till it was drowned. Whenever you are attacked by a spiritual or moral foe, imitate the brave ass and drown it. End of The Brave Ass and His Foe The Baker's Donkey I met some time ago with an account of a clever donkey which was employed in drawing a baker's cart. He was so well acquainted with the houses of all his master's customers that while the baker went into one to deliver his loaves, the sagacious ass would proceed to the door of the next at which, when he could reach the knocker, he gave a rap-tap-tap. If unable to do so, he would stamp with his feet in a peculiar way, well known to the inmates. He never failed to stop at their doors, nor was he ever known by mistake to go to the wrong house. Be as careful to learn your school lessons now, and as exact in business matters when you grow up, as was the baker's donkey, to attend to what he conceived his duty. End of the baker's donkey. The Shipwrecked Ass An ass was shipped at Gibraltar on board the Isis frigate to be sent to Captain Dundas, then at Malta. The ship, on her voyage, struck on a sandbank off Cape de Gat when, among other things, thrown overboard was the poor ass. It being hoped that, although the sea was running high, the animal might reach the shore. A few days afterwards, when the gates of Gibraltar were opened in the morning, the guard was surprised to see the ass present himself for admittance. On being allowed to pass, he went immediately to the stable of his former master. Not only had the animal swam safely to shore through the heavy surf, but, without guide or compass, had found his way from Cape de Gat to Gibraltar, a distance of more than 200 miles, across a mountainous and intricate country, intersected by streams, and in so short a time that he could not have made one false turn. End of the Shipwrecked Ass The Old Hawker and His Donkey 
An old hawker was in the habit of traversing the country with his ass, which had served him faithfully for many years. To help himself along, he used frequently to catch hold of the animal's tail. The winter wind was blowing strongly, and the snow had long been falling heavily, when the old hawker found himself suddenly plunged with the ass into a deep drift. In vain he struggled to get out, and fully believed that his last hour had come. The ass succeeded better, and reached the road, but after looking about and finding his master missing, he once more made his way through the drift and then placing himself in a position which enabled the old hawker to catch hold of his tail the faithful beast dragged him safely out never despise the help offered by a humble friend we are all apt to overestimate our own strength and wisdom end of the old hawker and his donkey the musical ass we have no less an authority than Dr. Franklin to prove that donkeys enjoy music. The mistress of a chateau in France, where he had visited, had an excellent voice, and every time she began to sing, a donkey belonging to the establishment invariably came near the window and listened with the greatest attention. One day, during the performance of a piece of music which apparently pleased it more than any it had previously heard, the animal, quitting its usual post outside the window, unceremoniously entered the room and, to exhibit its satisfaction, began to bray with all its might. I need scarcely hint, after you have read this story, that you will act wisely in keeping your proper place. You may be esteemed wonderfully clever in the nursery, or even at school, but when you appear among strangers at home, or go out visiting, wait till you are invited to exhibit your talents, or you may be considered as audacious a donkey as was the musical ass. I think I have told you anecdotes enough to show that donkeys are not such stupid creatures as is generally supposed, and I am very sure that... If they were better treated, their character would rise much in public estimation. End of The Musical Ass End of Chapter 4 of Stories of Animal Sagacity